Number eight says create a pivot table report from the data in the Pacific Region Worksheet and put it in a worksheet named Pivot Table Report. So to do a pivot table, we basically just need to be inside this table. And if we say Insert Pivot Table, it's going to say, we think you want this whole stuff. And we say yes. And do you want it in the existing worksheet or a new worksheet? We want it in a new worksheet. And we're going to name it with that name they gave us. So if I say OK, it puts it in a new worksheet, which currently is called Sheet 1. I'm going to rename that Pivot Table Report. Here are the fields, a field list of everything that's in that table. And then down below, it gives us some areas in which we can drag field or fields Number nine says add the total sales field to the values area. Here's the values. We want total sales. Total sales to values. And we want to format it. Notice here's total sales. We want to format it as currency. We can't actually do a whole lot there, although in this case we can. We can go here and right click on it or click the drop down arrow and say what do we want to do with those settings and a lot of things we can do with use a function on it. Uh, we want the number format to be currency and we click OK and now notice we can give it a custom name as well. Sum of total sales is not really a good name but they don't ask us to rename it so I think I'll leave it. There's the currency 118 million dollars. Number 10 says add the days since last order field to the rows area. Days since last order to the rows. So there's how many days it's been since the last order and how many total sales we have on that day number. After adding that group records in this field into groups of 100 starting with the value 0. To group these dates the way they ask us to, we can click on any one of them. These aren't actually dates. These are number of days since last order. That's our rows, days since last order. We can click on any one of them and go to the Analyze tab on our Pivot Tables ribbon. And one of the choices is group this field. And when we click on that, it says do it in groups of 100 starting with the value 0. So we're going to start with 0 in case we get some other things that are right up against the order date. Start at 0, end at the last one, 399, group by 100. So now if we say OK, instead of having 365 different rows. Now we've got them divided into groups of 100. And we still have our total sales of 118 million and that's much easier to grasp all that data. Number 11 says add the state province field to the columns area. Notice that if you click away from the pivot table data that pane goes away. So the easiest way to get it back is just click somewhere in the pivot table and you get your pivot table fields pane back. We want the state province field added to the columns area. So the state province would be up here in this area. Add it to the columns. So now we're going to break it up in columns into these geographic areas. So we still have the same row labels, but instead of all of them being lumped together, they're split out by the geographic area. Very cool. And then we still have the same grand total on the right. The last part of number 11 says add the company name field to the values area to count the number of companies in each state. So if I add the company name to the values area, it says, what do you want to do with that? Well, since it is text, it says, I think the only thing I can do is count that thing. 
So this says in Alaska, here's the total sales, but in Alaska we have 23 companies and in British Columbia we have 339 different companies, etc. So that's good to know. Where do we have the most companies? I'm guessing California. California, if you treated it as a country, would have the fifth largest economy in the world, just the state of California. Big state, lots of companies there. Number 12 says use the value field settings dialog box to customize the field names in the pivot table report as total sales and number of companies. Count of company name sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? I think we could change it right here. Let me see if I change it right here if it changes all of them. Yes, it does. So I can do it here. I can do it down here. They ask us to do it in the value field settings dialog box. So right here I could click on that and say value field settings and it says what name do you want? Well for the count of company name we want to name it number of companies and then for the sum of total sales they want to just call it total sales. So I'll go here at sum of total sales and just call it total sales and they want a space. Then it says print the worksheet showing the pivot table report and task pane. Here's the pivot table report and the task pane if we wanted to print it we could send it to an actual printer we could print it as a PDF etc. I'm not going to do that but if we show the print preview it says there are four pages. It's breaking it up that way. I would certainly want to turn it landscape, get that all in one if I could. In fact, if we wanted to do that, I wonder if we can put line breaks in here to make the column narrower. I double clicked on it and opened this. Let me just click once in it and start typing number of alt enter aha companies ah it didn't it didn't keep the formatting okay anyway that's how we could print it number 13 says drag the currently assigned fields between the filters, columns, and rows areas. So here's filters, columns, and rows areas to create the pivot table report shown. Now the one shown has row labels the same. Then it has total sales. But then it just has one column for number of companies and it allows the user to filter which state they want to see or which states. So instead of spreading these state provinces across separate columns we're going to take the state province and put it in the filters area and now it puts it up here and it says show me all of them this is all the total companies by how many days it's been but if I say show me one or more of these let's say I want to only see California wasn't that 1600 something companies so if I choose California it's the 1600 companies broken out this way and if I want to choose more than one I could say select multiple items and I can choose any or all of those so I could say how about combine Alaska and Hawaii are non contiguous states and it says there's the total there. So that filter is a very nice way to not have to scroll all over the place and just see exactly what you want by picking it. Our last item on number 14 says insert a pivot chart in the pivot table report worksheet. We can insert a chart just like any other chart either 
with the data on the same sheet or on a separate sheet. So we're going to go to insert pivot chart and notice it gives us a lot of different choices for the type chart we want to insert. We're actually tracking two different things, the total sales and the number of companies, but if we pick a chart type that only charts one set of data, we can't do both of them. However, the directions say pick a combo chart. So that's this thing and when we click on that it brings up a dialog box that says ah now you can do two different things. What do you want for the first one? It says for total sales choose a clustered column and that's what it already has. It says for number of companies choose a line chart but notice this line is just lying flat on the horizontal axis but as the directions give us a hint to click this box here it says show this series on the secondary axis so if we click that it plots it on a secondary axis with this number of dollars here so we've got total sales and then this is the number of companies on a secondary axis and here's the secondary axis here's 30 companies 40 companies 50 companies etc so if I click OK, then it gives me this chart. Notice this only goes up to 60 companies. We already know California has 1,600, so how could this possibly be true? The answer lies in the fact that we have filtered the data and we're only showing things from Alaska and Hawaii. However, if we, say, select everything, now it says, ah, this is more like it. Here's one data point and another, and those four add up to way more than 1,600. They add up to all the total number of companies, which are 2,332, and there are the numbers.